Hey guys, today I'm working on a SanDisk uh, flash drive that was uh, exposed to some uh, liquid and uh, as a result stopped working. I'll take you through the process of inspection and uh, if the unit can be saved, we'll attempt to save it and revive it that way. So this is the unit that we'll be resurrecting today. A screwdriver to pry it apart. This is what we have on the inside, even without the zoom I'm pretty sure you guys can tell that there is a lot of uh, white flakes all over the board. Usually that uh, indicates signs of corrosion. But over here you'll be able to see it in way bigger detail. And it's not um, a surprise that this is very, very badly corroded. I don't know for how long it uh, remained moist like this, but... Uh, yeah, it's not it's not looking good. So now that it's all taken apart, uh, let's see what the other side looks like. And the other side has this BGA 132 memory chip that we will definitely have to remove because uh, you see what's in between the chip is there's lots of lots of gunk and there are definitely gonna be some corroded pads. Taking it one step at a time, we'll be able to troubleshoot this thing and see if it's actually gonna be able to load up on its own. Uh, some of this stuff looks quite cooked and corroded pretty badly. I still think that we may be able to save this. Um, I do like the quality of SanDisk units. They're really, really well designed. We can start by cleaning it up. I would just apply a little bit of alcohol This is just a regular IPA I sprayed on it, 99% uh, alcohol, you can get that anywhere, like in any pharmacy. And we want to just remove as much corrosion as we can. Now this controller chip that sits in the middle, that is definitely coming off, uh, BGA component on the back. This component here is also coming off. Um, pads need to be cleaned, retained, and uh, resettled. Once the end is removed, it should give us uh, access to the controller. If we can load up the controller, then we can save the board. If as long as the the NAND did not corrode on the inside, I've seen that happen. Uh, we get flash drives. Uh, that had been the, um, in the ocean, that had been in a lake. Uh, plugging this thing in right now and hoping that it's going to work um, isn't the best thing, even though it looks much, much cleaner, much better now. It still has corrosion. I also like to uh, clean up all the terminals on the little capacitors and stuff and little resistors just to make sure that uh, the contact is still present. Let's um, start with the NAND because the NAND will have to come off regardless. I'm gonna add flux. Okay, I need um, a new syringe. Actually, this is a fairly new board. So using a, a host or a substitute board for that matter, I may not have one. Also, this unit is uh, 256 gigs in capacity. So it's a fairly large unit. So if we had to go and buy one, there, there's no simple way to tell what's going to be on the inside. We may get a two, 256, open it up, and it's a completely different design, making uh, the purchase totally useless. So let's try to save this. I know for sure I don't have that many 256s in uh, my inventory. Uh, and even if I do, if I can get that to work, I'd like to have that as a functional unit as opposed to uh, using my own parts to restore this. So let's put on the fume extraction. And uh, heat it up to get it removed. While the board is still warm, I'd like to uh, go ahead and clean it. 
that way we don't have to do it twice because there's no need to put the board to extra stress if we don't have to right this is the NEM chip and I set it right here for cleaning and let's work on this controller so making sure that the connection on it is, is perfect is absolutely essential without uh, controller the device wouldn't work definitely a, a lot more flux than I wanted to put on that. Okay, while well we have a flux uh, galore happening here, let's take, take that opportunity and clean up the rest of the contacts. Yeah, this resistor was eaten up pretty badly. Now uh, it's time for the controller clean. Alright, that's good. That's actually really good. Let's get this. how we would mount it, put it back up, and uh, let's put this back on our device. I'll just uh, use a slightly smaller airflow to, to mount it. This looks quite quite good. Much better than it was at least. Alright, let's clean up the mess on aisle three. dry it out. This is 120 degrees at full airflow. So plug this in. So 
over here we're getting 64 megabytes sandisk corona <laughs> corona very symbolic name for the device um, and we are getting an LED that's constantly flashing indicating that our controller is on let's turn it off at least for uh, the functionality of the board it's doing what it's supposed to do now let's do the rest and that's clean up of the NAND and reballing and remounted I think we're actually gonna get this thing working all on its own and uh, bringing it back to life so back to uh, fume extractor Looking at this right now, I am a bit worried at some of the at how some of these pads look. You can see that this plane here from the ground started to buckle. Usually, that means the corrosion started to kind of get built up underneath, and that's what's lifting up the mask. That's why it's not smooth surface. It's kind of like this got like these uh, shingles especially on the top section. Hopefully none of the um, critical signals are affected by that. The next part we need a stencil. definitely see that this is going to be a really nice turnout once it's finished every pad is flawless should we worry about the um, exposed pads that had shingled the mask bit off of them not really a spacing on pads on NAND chip is why fiberglass pan Pop this back in there. Sit it like that. And let's mount. Okay, we're almost there. I'm giving it a bit more just because we're dealing with corroded board, corroded NAND possibly, so I just want to make sure that they are grab each other and uh, hold each other tight. Let's see how it ended up. Check the gap. I see there's no more garbage in between and the spacing is fairly even all across. I'm pretty happy with it. It's cool now. Plug this in. Power up our device. We're getting 20 milliamps and uh, we're getting our full capacity right there. 232 uh, cruiser mounted. Let's launch our studio. and there is our device and if we go on the sector map and if we scroll it we're navigating the actual unit luckily for us today we were able to bring this unit back to life and uh, save unnecessary need of using uh, another donor to revive it or going 
through extra miles of work uh, by attempting chip off recovery route. A device that's 256 gigs made by SanDisk could literally take two, three weeks uh, error correcting it, reading it and uh, compiling the mix. So I'm super happy we didn't have to go that route. So uh, if uh, you guys lost data on the SanDisk flash drive uh, by accident or not, uh, check out the link in the description box. Uh, all our contact details are there and we'll be happy to help you. Uh, thank you for watching this episode. If you have any suggestions or comments, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys all in the next episode.